wet rocks on which our bathing dresses dried, small coves deserted in our later years for more adventurous inlets down the coast, paralysis when climbing up the cliff, too steep to reach the top, too far to fall, tumbling to death in seething surf below, a ledge just wide enough to lodge one's foot, a sea pink clump, the only thing to clutch, cold wave-worn slate so mercilessly smooth, and no one near, and evening coming on, till Ralph arrived. Now put your left foot here, give us your hand. And back across the years I swing to safety with old friends again. Sweet were the afternoons of treasure hunts, and in the Oakley's garden, after tea of splits and cream under old apple boughs, with high tide offering prospects of a bathe, the winners had their prizes. Once I won, but that was an unfortunate affair. My mother set the clues, and I, the host, knew well the likely workings of her mind. Childhood is measured out by sounds and smells and sights before the dark of reason grows. Ears, here again the wild sou'westers whine. Deep in the noise there was a core of peace. Deep in my heart a warm security. Nose, smell again the early morning smells. Congealing bacon and my father's pipe. The after breakfast freshness out of doors where sun had dried the heavy dew and freed acres of time to scent the links and lawns. Mint around the spring and fennel in the lane and honeysuckle wafted from the hedge. A neighbor's cesspool like a body blow then, clean, medicinal, and cold, the sea. Eyes see again the rock face in the lane, years before tarmac and the motor car. It all is there, excitement for the eyes, imagined ghosts on unfrequented roads, gated and winding up through broom and gorse, out of the parish, on to who knows where. Safe Cornish holidays before the storm. Let us pray. Give unto us all, O Lord, an understanding heart, and grant that we may learn to work thy will until the fullness of thy kingdom be come. Amen. Amen. In the cricket match yesterday, the A11 beat Eaglehouse first 11 by 100 runs. 
Before the hymn, the skipper would announce the latest names of those who'd lost their lives for king and country and the dragon school. Sometimes his gruff old voice was full of tears when a particular favorite had been killed. Then we would hear the nickname of the boy, Pongo or Podge, and how he'd played three Q for Oxford, and if only he had lived, he might have played for England, which he did, but in a grimmer game against the Hun. And then we'd all look solemn, knowing well there'd be no extra holiday today. And we were told we each must do our bit, and so we knitted shapeless gloves from string for men in minesweepers, and on the map we stuck the Allied flags along the Somme, visited wounded soldiers, learned by heart those patriotic lines of Oxenham. What can a little chap do for his country and for you? He can boil his head in the stew, we added, for the trenches and the guns meant less to us than bicycles and gangs and marzipan and what there was for prep. One lucky afternoon, in Chondi's shop, I bought a book with tipped-in colour plates, City of Dreaming Spires, or some such name, soft, late Victorian watercolours, framed against brown paper pages. All that was crumbling, picturesque and quaint, informed my taste and sent me biking off escaped from games for architecture bound. When I returned from school, I found we'd moved. 53 Church Street. Yes, the slummy end. A little laugh accompanied the joke. For we were Chelsea now, and we had friends whose friends had friends who knew Augustus John. We liked bold color schemes, orange and black and clever, daring plays about divorce at the St. Martins. Oh, our lives were changed. Ladies with pearls and hyphenated names supplanted simpler aunts from Muswell Hill. A brand new car and brand new chauffeur came to carry off my father to the works. <laughs> 